Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. Um, this video is a little bit different. I, I'm sorry about the lighting. I know it's super bad quality. <laughs> it makes my hair look really yellow. Um, wasn't planning on filming this video, but I feel like I just kind of need to like talk about this. Um, if you've watched my videos for a while or followed me on Instagram, you've probably heard me talk about binge eating disorder. Um, and how I have struggled with that for many years. The past year for me has been pretty good as far as binging goes. Actually, I would say like two years. Um, I started my weight loss journey in 2015 and since then I can honestly say like I felt like I had um, defeated binging. Um, it's always kind of like lingered in the back of my my head, my heart, um, my mind always. I feel like I had come to terms though with the fact that it will kind of always be something that's in me. It's kind of like a, you know, an alcoholic is always an alcoholic or something. Just kind of like any other addiction. Um, and I've always sort of felt like binging will always be something that I'll have to fight. Or that I'll have to deal with. Um, that being said, I've done damn, damn good these past two years um, with really like defeating, defeating the binge and and getting to the root. I get asked like how I did that all the time. Um, in the like height of when my binging was the worst, I got up to 286 pounds. Well, that's the highest that I saw on the scale. Um, there were times I just wouldn't weigh myself and I'm, I'm sure I was probably closer to 300. Um, that was like um, early 2015 where I was, I was 17 years old. Yeah, 17 years old. Um, at that time, I finished high school early and I decided to make my number one priority um, weight loss, but obviously for me, I couldn't lose weight without dealing with the root of the problem, which was binge eating for me. That's how, that's what got me to almost 300 pounds was binge eating disorder. And <laughs> so I was going to counseling like twice a week. Um, and my counselor, she was really amazing. She actually didn't have any like background in eating disorders, but, but she used cognitive behavioral therapy. Um, which really helped me it was kind of like starting with your thoughts and then how they make you feel and what your feelings make like how they affect your actions um and so i just did so much work with identifying kind of the root of why i was binging and, and what it was coming from and for me it was like a void that i was filling um it was a control thing i have had really bad anxiety um and depression and for me, I found that the root of that was um, I had kind of an unstable, like, childhood slash early teen years. Um, and when I couldn't control anything else, I could control food. Looking back now, it's like that's not even true because you're, like, subconsciously thinking this. It's like an action of control. You feel like you're controlling whatever you're putting into your body, but in reality, the one thing that I was acting out of control is what completely took control of my life and made me feel absolutely out of control. So through the counseling and the tools that I learned to use um, to kind of like sort of like to replace or kind of to do things instead of binging um, and to be very mindful of how I was feeling when I was binging and what certain things were triggering my binges, um, I I was able to get that under control and I'm so proud of that. I was really, really proud of that. Um, it had been a very long time since I'd binged um, and I recently have had somewhat of a relapse. Um, I It's really hard to talk about because like uh, so much of my life is sharing my weight loss journey and it's like I've built this this following now where there's thousands of people watching me and 
it used to be when I used to binge, I like you it's you get so ashamed after you binge so ashamed and it's like this thing that you just you feel disgusting you don't want anyone to see it. you can't even look yourself in the mirror and before it was like binging was something that i had to hide with the pe the people i had to hide from the people around me which you know was it's obviously unhealthy as it is and but now i feel like it's kind of like on a bigger scale where i feel like such a hypocrite <laughs> for I feel like a hypocrite for being on this side of things and trying to like give advice and be motivational or inspirational in some way when on the other end of the screen there's people who are where I was when I was almost 300 pounds and binging every day and they think that I'm so much different from that when I'm not. I'm still dealing with the same things and while I did have like a you know, that long period of time where I was really doing well, I just like, being back at this spot is so like, defeating. And I, probably about like a month ago, I stopped being really intentional about what I was eating. Um, and I wasn't binging yet. I was just not being very intentional. And unfortunately for me, Although I've been able to lose that weight, I haven't been able to find the balance of the in-between where it's like the, the middle ground of either being very intentional and tracking everything I eat and being completely 100% on track or being absolutely out of control with my food and gaining weight uncontrollably. So about a month ago, that kind of started when I lost the like intentional, be, just, when I lost that sense of being intentional about what I was consuming um, and just my habits, I sort of guess, I guess you could say I started like a, that was the beginning of a, a downward spiral. Um, probably about two weeks ago, I had my first binge in a really, really long time. Um, there have been a couple times where I've slipped up um, in this like two years since I, since I started losing weight, um, probably less than 10, I would say, which is really good for me because at the height of things I was binging two, three times a day. Um, it was like a normal meal for me was a binge. And so since that initial binge, I have binged probably four other, I think four other times. Um, th those were like actual binges and the entirety of the two weeks though, my mind has been just consumed by food and I, I feel completely out of control again. <laughs> My mind has just been consumed by food. It's all that I think about. I wake up thinking about it. I go to sleep thinking about it. I wake up in the middle of my sleep thinking about it. I am spending all my money on food. I am just my time on food and I'm hiding it like this. I'm so ashamed. I'm like the habits that I've been developing again are so scary to me because I like eating in my car, going, getting food, parking in a parking lot, and, um, you know, just eating all, eating in my car alone, buying tons of food. Like, I numb out when I'm buying the food, and I, it doesn't matter how much money I'm spending, how much food I'm getting, I numb out, and then I, I have, like, places where I keep food, and it's, like, this comfort thing, and, it's all, so I feel like I have food all around me and I always, the thought of not having food um, with me and not just food, like the, my comfort foods, not having those with me is scary. I wanted more than anything to not have to deal with this as a situation. I wanted, I didn't want this to be a thing. <laughs> I wanted it to just be something that I was you know, like a little bit of time where I was doing some 
tests and things and it was just like not a big deal it was just a couple things I was doing but it's an issue and I, I don't want to ignore it because ignoring it and not knowing not accepting the help that I needed and not confronting the issue is what got me to such a horrible place before and I can't I just I it's exhausting these past two weeks I have just been it's exhausting hiding and and being so ashamed and stuffing my face and just only thinking about food and planning my time my day my schedule everything around when I'm going to eat what I'm going to eat where I'm gonna go to get my food and only thinking about food it's exhausting and the, the feelings that I feel because I'm doing this being so ashamed and secretive and depressed it's like all of those things are exhausting and I just got to the point today where I'm like <sighs> like right now in this moment food has control of me again and I've kind of retreated from sharing so much as I usually do um, on like Instagram and stuff and that's honestly just been because I've been retreating from everything really in general and I've been kind of very much to myself because I've been hiding this thing that I've been dealing with um, and I'm sorry for that. I feel very cowardly. Um, <laughs> I hear so many people talk about motivation and say things like, you know, well, not going back to what you used to be, like, should be enough motivation or wanting a certain, like, wanting to be a certain way or look a certain way or be able to do a certain thing should be enough motivation or, um, you know, like, not being where you want to be should be the motivation, but... You know, for someone who deals with the mental health issues that I've been dealing with and that I know that so many other people do, that's hard to hear. That's hard to hear because you sit back and you say, well, why isn't it enough motivation for me then? What's wrong with me? Why are other people able to find the motivation to tackle their emotional eating, you know, problems and their binge eating? And it's being back under the control of binge eating disorder that's so isolating and so scary and so exhausting and just so much more than I can than I can deal with and I, I just got to the point today where I realized that I'm having a real big problem right now and that I absolutely need to deal with it I haven't been looking at myself in the mirror I haven't today's the first day I've put makeup on and <laughs> a while. Um, I haven't been wanting to be around my family. I haven't been wanting to be around my friends. I haven't been wanting to go to work. I haven't been wanting to schedule the appointments to get the professional help that I, that I need to help me through these things. I haven't been wanting to schedule those appointments because I don't want to be seen by those people, by those, the doctors or a counselor. I don't want to be seen in this, this, this place of, of being so out of control. And this is what binge eating disorder has made me do. It's made me hide and, and isolate myself, myself and I don't wanna do that. I don't wanna do that anymore. I defeated binge eating two years ago. And even still, I do feel like it's going to be something that's going to be a part of me for the rest of my life and it's going to be a part something that I have to be intentional and mindful of and I just want to say I guess I guess I just think it's important to acknowledge the fact that that's okay um, that you know it's it's like it's being in recovery so I don't know if this video has like a purpose really um, I guess it's just me kind of saying that I, right now, even though I have had a really great two years and I've accomplished a whole lot and I've overcome binge eating disorder, right now at this, at this time in my life, I am struggling again. And I guess I'm just kind of documenting where I'm at. 
I do feel like it's good for me to establish this actually being a situation and not just ignoring it and letting it go and get even worse and worse. Uh, I want to pursue like changing my habits and getting help and, and helping myself because I don't want to be controlled by this eating disorder. I, I can't. I, I can't let my life be controlled by food. I won't. I'm not sure if any of you watching can relate in any way, but um, if you have any stories of how you, um, of your experience with binge eating disorder or how you overcame it, um, or any stories kind of about your recovery or certain tools you use to help you, um, I'd be very interested to hear those. And I think it could also help a lot of people watching. So um, I'd love to kind of start a discussion in the comment section. Um, I love you guys and I want to encourage you to stay strong and to not be afraid to acknowledge your what you're going through and to acknowledge maybe that you need to confront something. Um, I think we all deal with these type of things throughout our lives and it's not anything to be ashamed even though I know it can be so isolating. Um, so thank you for listening and I will see you guys in my next video.